Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the edit place. And today we're going to be making a video on how to basically create that MKBHD zoom in effect that we talked about in a couple videos ago. Uh, but this time we're going to be doing it um, not the way he does it. I want to show you a couple of free ways uh, in both DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut. And these are all actually based on a comment from, I'm always terrible at names, uh, Akshay. Hope I said that relatively right. Um, so he commented a couple different ways to do it in DaVinci Resolve as well as a free way to do it in Final Cut. So we're going to take a look at his comments and see how he suggests doing it. We're going to see how close it resembles. And yeah, hopefully this uh, works for you guys if you don't want to buy a plugin. So first, let's talk Final Cut Pro. If you didn't see the last video, I'll leave it down in the link in the description. But the way that MKBHD does this kind of zoom in effect is by using a plugin called M Blueprint from Motion VFX. Again, all links are down in the description below if you want the easiest, best way uh, to do this. And in this plugin here, it's got a whole bunch of stuff, but what he uses is custom camera. And if I were to simply drag that on top of uh, a clip here, we can see that if I play back, that like bounce zoom in kind of holds there for however long it is. And then it kind of bounces out. So all by dragging in one thing. And of course we can go in and uh, change the parameters. So that way it zooms different amounts, bigger, more dramatic, less, but it's very simple, easy to use and very, very quick. And the key thing here is it gives us that bounce in and bounce out. Now for his comment regarding Final Cut Pro, um, he says use the Ken Burn effect in Final Cut by clicking on the crop button, blah, blah, blah. Does the exact same thing. Does it? All right, so I've brought out a clip here. All right, and I'm actually going to duplicate it just so we can see the difference here. And so on this first one, I'm going to put the custom camera. And then on the second one, we're going to use his effect here. So uh, to get to the Ken's Burn effect, like he mentions, is the crop button right underneath the preview panel here. And then normally it's going to be set to crop, but right here in the preview pane, you'll see trim crop and Ken Burns. So I'm going to choose that, which brings up these boxes here. And we can see the green box is our start point and the red box is our end point. So unlike in... Uh, the, you know, custom cameras, parameters, we can choose just sliders to zoom in and out. Here we kind of have to play around with these. So again, the more difference between these boxes, the more dramatic it's going to look. So this would be a very uh, small zoom in, whereas this is going to be a lot. And so right off the bat, let's just see what that looks like. And again, this is going to be dramatic. So we can see it zooms out there, but we don't get our ease in. It, it was just a zoom out. So let's go back to the crop. I believe this is the rotate. So first we want to ease in and I'm going to make it less dramatic here. I don't love these uh, windows just because to me they feel a little less precise, but they're not terrible. Now, if I play back, we get that ease in. And there is a difference between ease and bounce. So ease in is a nice, subtle, just kind of movement in. Um, it's like the name suggests you're easing into the shot where a bounce has more, again, it's a, it's a more dynamic movement to it. So if I play the beginning of this one, see how it almost like winds up. So it like starts slow and then kind of speeds in and then slows down right before it gets to the final spot. So that's a bounce versus an ease. And again, we're not getting our ease out built into here. So what I would have to do is actually create two clips, or kind of three, I guess. So I could chop it into thirds, 
That's the first one. That was a little too subtle as well. So I think I'm going to this. And actually, because uh, it's going to be difficult to line these up perfectly, let me undo all that, make this more dramatic. All right. So now we have our in, and then hopefully this works. For now, we'll chop it into thirds. And then on this middle one, we're actually going to remove all that so that there's no Ken Burns effect. And then on this one, we actually want to reverse it. Although we don't want to remove all crop. Ever. So I basically need to crop it into that. Which How can I do that? All right, so the easiest way I can think of doing this actually is by trick of taking the last frame from one and the first frame from another. And then I'm going to opacity this down. And then I basically need to scale it. All right, so that's pretty lined up there and put that back in the middle. All right, so let's see what we got here. So we got to ease in, holds there, and jumps out. Now there is a little bit of a bump there because again, it's not smooth because we're going from one easing clip to easing out, but then the static shot here in the middle. So maybe adding some sort of a little bit of camera shake or just spending more time to get the crop perfectly lined up because that jump is just because it's not like absolute perfect. It's not terrible though. Again, you could definitely blend it better and definitely get something pretty close. Again, let's go back to the custom camera, get that bounce in and jumps out. It is close. It will save you money from buying the plugin, but that was a lot more work, as you can tell. <laughs> Let's go uh, check out DaVinci Resolve and see about doing it in here. Uh, so here I have a normal clip. Let's go back to uh, his comment. And here he says, use dynamic zoom from the inspector window and select ease in or ease out in DaVinci Resolve. And then I even replied to that, uh, have I really missed out this option the entire time? I use dynamic zoom all the time. And basically what he's talking about here is we have our clip selected. And then right here we have dynamic zoom, which normally by default is set to linear. Uh, and it actually kind of functions pretty similarly to Final Cut Pro. Uh, right underneath our preview pane, you have this drop down menu. One of them's crop and transform. But you can select dynamic zoom and it's going to bring up the same exact uh, windows that we saw here. So red is going to be the end and uh, green is going to be the uh, in and out here. And instead of having our swap button over here, it's right underneath here. And we can do the same exact sort of thing. But we do have ease in, ease out, and ease in and out uh, option. Now, at first, I thought something amazing. I was like, oh, ease in and out, we want both. But if I select this here and turn off the transform and play it, we can see that it does the ease in, but it doesn't actually ease out. And it feels like it's all pretty much doing the same thing. Uh, the only difference would be if I literally hit this swap. So if I choose any three of those options, ease out definitely goes faster. But then if I swap ease in, knees out. So here I could go into thirds um, or I'll show a slightly different variation of the effect. If you don't want that middle part to hold so long or at all, you could make it a little easier on yourself and just uh, split it in half. And then you wouldn't have to deal with like cropping in stuff because you could just do that and then just swap the second one. So now I'll ease in. And he's out and did a pretty good job at having a little bit of a bounce in there. So it wasn't just like a, you know, jump cut that looked pretty gross. Like it has a cool little bounce to it. I don't think it looks half bad. So if you were using that in your A roll for like a joke or a quick extra point you wanted to, you could have a quick zoom in and then as long as your sentence was short, and then zoom back out, that's great. But again, if you wanted that like 
MQBHD where instead of jump cutting in to then explain something and so you need it to hold for a while, then yeah, you would kind of need to play around with uh, splitting it into thirds, having that center section cut out. And just the only downside is if you were to make any changes to anything, you're going to have a lot more problems because now you're dealing with multiple different clips. Whereas if I go back to Final Cut and this custom camera thing, if I want it to be shorter, I just drag this. If I want it to be longer, I can drag it throughout. And then again, I have all of my parameters, the zoom in strength, camera position. I can make it wriggle around, randomness. Um, you can just do a ton with it. So, But I plenty understand that not everyone wants to buy a plugin. Maybe you're only trying to do this effect once, uh, and so it's not worth paying for something, then great. Hopefully this tutorial was able to help you out. Thank you to Akshay for commenting and giving your suggestions. Uh, it was fun to kind of dive in and see how to do it a couple other different ways. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you guys have other ways to do this or you want to see other effects or tutorials in anything. Uh, I know we didn't jump into Premiere, but uh, yeah, if you guys want to see it there, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.